Lord God, thank you for um, bringing us to this book of Ruth mm. and for already what you've shown us about yourself in it. And Lord, thank you for the anointing that you have on Luke's life. Pray that you will work through him and speak through him this morning. Pray that you'll work on our hearts, soften them this morning before you. So what you have to say to us will impact us in a way that we will go and uh, follow you more closely and more dearly. In your name we pray. Amen. Allow me. I think my microphone is working by the talented gifts of Jamal. Thank you, Jamal. I think a round of applause for Jamal down the back would be good. He's keeping us afloat this morning. Thank you, buddy. Well, good morning once again. And, and good morning to everybody joining us via YouTube. We hope the sound <laughs> is okay on your end. But as we've, we've said, we're continuing our story through the book of Ruth. We've been in here the past two weeks. Many familiar with the book of Ruth? Okay. Last week, we opened up the first chapter. And the curtains of the first act opened up. And this story was filled with tragedy. We were introduced to Naomi an elderly Israelite woman who'd been living in the foreign lands of Moab, forced to flee Judah with her family due to a famine. Sound familiar? Remember Naomi? And while Naomi is in Moab, what happens? Her husband, Elimelech, dies. And her two sons, Mahon and Kilion, also die. That happened in the first chapter. And we're introduced to Ruth, and Ruth is a Moabite woman, and she has married one of Naomi's sons, but he's died. <laughs> and so Naomi and Ruth are two widows in Moab. And after some trying years in Moab, they heard that the Lord had provided for his people back in Judah. And so Naomi, helped by the loyalty and faith of Ruth, Together they return to Judah in hopes of a more promising future. Sound familiar? Are you with me? Alana's with us this morning. Glad you're here, honey. <laughs> and in the last chapter, the curtains closed. And as the curtains close, the last picture we get is of Naomi and Ruth back in Judah. And the, the author tells us, last verse of chapter 1, they return in Judah just as the barley harvest is beginning. And I think this is a little indicator from the author that we're going to move from famine to abundance. <laughs> that things are going to be looking up, as Salome regarded, as suggested this morning, for Ruth and Naomi. And this morning we come to the next act. The next chapter, chapter 2. And the curtains open. And Naomi and Ruth are back in Judah. And let's hear what happens next. And as I said last week, we're going to read 22, three verses of scripture. And after the first five, most of our eyes will glaze over. So I encourage you, if you can, <laughs> stick with me, because you need the elements of the story to understand what's going on. You with me? Hear the word of the Lord from Ruth chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, a man of standing from the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. And Naomi said to her, go ahead, my daughter. So she went out, excuse me, entered a field and began to glean behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she was working in the field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. And just then, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted his, the harvesters. The Lord be with you. Hey, we did that today, right? The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you, they answered. And Boaz asked the overseers of his harvester, who's that young woman belong to? And the overseers replied, she is the Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She came into the field and has remained here from morning till now except for the short rest in the shelter. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars that the men have filled. At this, she bowed down her face to the ground. 
And she asked him, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me a foreigner? Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. How you left your father and your mother and your homeland and you came to live with the people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. May I continue to find favor in your eyes, my Lord, she said. You've put me at ease by speaking kindly to your servant, though I do not have the standing of one of your servants. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, come over here, have some bread and dip it in the wine vinegar. And when she sat down with the harvesters, he offered her some roasted grain. She ate all she wanted and had some left over. And as she got up to glean, Boaz gave orders to his men, let her gather among the sheaves and don't reprimand her. Even pull out some stalks for her to pick up and don't rebuke her. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. And then she threshed the barley she had gathered and it amounted to about an ephah, which is about 30 pounds of grain. She carried it back to the town and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave her Ruth also brought out and gave her what she had left over after she had eaten enough. And her mother-in-law asked her, "Where did you glean today? Where did you work? Blessed is the man who t- took notice of you." And Ruth told her mother-in-law about the one who's, in whose place she had been working. "The name of the man I worked with today was Boaz," she said. "The Lord bless him," Naomi said to her daughter-in-law. He has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. She added that the man, this man is our close relative. He is one of our guardian redeemers. And then Ruth the Moabite said, he even said to me, stay with my workers until they finished harvesting all the grain. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it will be good for you, my daughter, to go with the women who work for him because in someone else's field, you might be harmed. So Ruth stayed close by the women of Boaz to glean until the barley and wheat harvest was finished. And she lived with her mother-in-law. This is the word of the Lord. (laughs) Thanks be to God. We made it. (laughs) If I was to give my message for this morning a title, it would be this. You ready? The restorative power of kindness. The restorative power of kindness. The story of Ruth and Naomi, you may remember from last week, in verse 1, it takes place during the time, during a time in Israel when kindness was in short supply. A story takes place during a period known as the time of the judges. And the time of the judges was a period lacking in kindness, to say the least. There was no king or defined leadership in Israel at this time. And there was constant uprisings and brutal and uh, cruel tribal conflicts. Everybody did what was right in their own eyes, says the writer of Judges. A neglect of the Lord and a neglect of neighbor. And every so often, God would raise up a judge, a male or female, from among the people to fight off the dangers and to bring some stability to the nation. But soon enough, things would spiral back down again into moral decay, and there would be a scarcity of kindness. That was the time of the judges. And let me give you a picture of this. If you were to go to the chapter just before our book of Ruth, the last chapter of Judges, you would see how the kindness spiral had gotten incredibly low. 12,000 men of Israel stormed the people of Jabesh Gilead. They killed the men and the older women and the children. They sexually assaulted some of the younger women and they dragged them off into forced marriages. There was a lack of kindness (laughs) during the time of the judges. You know, I was watching the news at the start of the week I saw that another woman was out running and was attacked just on Monday. And it got me thinking, maybe the time of the judges still lingers. I don't know. Maybe there's still people who do what's right in their own eyes with neglect for the Lord and neglect for neighbor. But maybe that's a stretch. In our Bibles, the book of Judges is right next to the book of Ruth. 
And this is to show us that these are at the same time in history. But it's also to show us that Ruth is like a light in the darkness. <laughs> the book of Judges stands in direct contrast to the book of Ruth. Because the book of Judges shows us a world out of whack. It shows us darkness and chaos. And when people do what's right in their own eyes. But the book of Ruth shows us what God can do in the midst of the chaos. When ordinary people walk humbly and faithfully with their God. Ruth shows us that when people do what's right in the eyes of the Lord, in love of Lord and in love of neighbor, it's a restorative force and it can restore broken lives. And in this second act, in this chapter that we've just read, this story is brimming with kindness. Did you catch it? Did you see much of the kindness? Did you hear it? Ruth, we're told has left her family, her country, her religion, all sense of security to care for her aging mother-in-law, Naomi. Ruth has selflessly come to a land that is often hostile to foreigners, especially foreign women, all to care for her mother-in-law. What kindness, right? <laughs> Ruth and Naomi, they're poor as muck. They haven't got two pennies to rub together. These widows have no lands of their own because only men can own lands. And Naomi's husband, Elimelech, likely owned land in Judah before he left. But in order to reclaim those lands, in order to redeem those lands, you need to be a man. <laughs> and so the ladies without husbands are landless and are dirt poor. They're empty as a pocket with nothing to lose, as Paul Simon would say. <laughs> And Ruth, being the younger, more able, more agile of the two, is out to work because ultimately she's the provider for the women. And so we're told that Ruth takes to the fields from morning till night, busting her back to get food for Naomi and Ruth. What kindness, right? Is that kindness? And Ruth is doing so in accordance with Jewish law. It was a customary for the grain to be left over after the harvest for the poor, built into the law of God, was a provision for the poor, for the orphans, the, the widows, and the foreigners. And this law is recorded for us in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 9. It says this, When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of the field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Leave some for the poor and the foreigners. Hey, that's Ruth and Naomi. <laughs> I am the Lord your God, says the Lord. The landowners, according to God's law, had a responsibility to leave grain for the poor. And Ruth, whether she knew this law or not, or whether she just saw somebody else doing it and decided I'll do the same with the poor folk, Ruth puts herself in a dangerous situation because it's often dangerous gleaning as a poor person in the field. And she puts herself in danger because me and Ma, we got to eat, right? We got to eat. What kindness. And Boaz, the owner of the field, he sees Ruth's kindness. And what does he repay her with? Kindness. <laughs> I told you this text was brimming with kindness. You're going to see it after a while. Boaz shows up to work and he says, who's your one working in the fields over there? Who's that? Who's your one? That's how I imagine him saying it anyway. <laughs> and his worker says, oh, that's your one. Uh, Naomi's daughter-in-law, Ruth. She came, back with, uh, she came back with her from Moab. She asked to glean, and she's been there all morning. She's been at it all day. And Boaz, he's not a young man. He's an older man, I would assume. He's a man of standing, we're told, a wealthy man. And he calls Ruth over. And his first words to her, my daughter. Think on that for a second. <laughs> this is a foreign woman, a stranger, in a time when ethnic distinction was very important. My daughter takes ownership of her in a sense. What kindness, right? And Boaz, knowing the dangers of gleaning in the fields, assures Ruth that you're safe here. Don't go anywhere else. Stay here. We look after you. Follow along with the women because there's strength in numbers. 
And I've told my men not to lay a hand on you. Because it's the time of the judges, remember? We've seen how women get treated during the time of the judges. I've told my men not to lay a hand on you. Oh, and Ruth, if you're thirsty, come over here and get a drink from the jugs that the men have filled and are drinking from. Again, culturally, a foreign woman drinking from the same cup as Israelite men? Are you kidding me? Didn't happen. What kindness, right? And in fact, it's all a bit too much for Ruth. What does she do? She puts her face to the ground. Who am I that you have such kindness for me, a foreigner? It's overwhelming. She's overwhelmed by kindness. And Boaz doesn't stop there. He says, Ruth, I've heard about you. I've heard about what you've done for Naomi. And then he blesses her. He says, may the Lord repay you for what you have done. May the Lord reward you richly. The God of Israel under whose wings you have taken refuge. What kindness. And then at mealtime, they don't leave Ruth over in the fields by herself. They call her over. Hey, Ruth, come eat with us. And there's a picture of her dipping her, her food in the same jugs, the same jars as everybody else. Come be a part of us and eat with us. And all in all, when Ruth turns home, she's blessed. She's got a full stomach. And she's got about 30 pounds of grain <laughs> to carry home. That's how I imagine her carrying it. I don't know. Maybe it was more like this. But what kindness, right? This text is brimming with kindness. And we can imagine the scene when Ruth comes back in the door wherever they're staying to Naomi. Naomi, Naomi, you'll never guess what happened today. And Naomi's absolutely floored by the amount of grain that she sees in Ruth's hands. Where did you glean today? Who was so kind to you? She asks, where did you glean? And Ruth tells her, well, his name was Boaz. His name was Boaz. And I wish I could have seen uh, Naomi's face as she made that calculation. Hold on, Boaz, wait a second. <laughs> Boaz, he's a relative of my late husband, Elimelech. And if he's been kind enough to treat you this way, maybe he'll be kind enough to redeem our lands back. <laughs> and Ruth begins to make the calculation. I'm sorry, Naomi begins to make the calculation. And suddenly there's possibility where there was no possibility. Suddenly there's hope where there was no hope. Suddenly there's a possibility of abundance provision because of the kindness that they've received. And Naomi, being a wise old Israelite woman, begins to read between the divine lines. <laughs> It wasn't just by chance that Ruth showed up at Boaz's field. It wasn't just Ruth's attractiveness that made Boaz have favor on her or be kind to her. But Naomi begins to see God's masterful, kind hand in the midst of this circumstance. Yes, there's Ruth's kindness. Yes, there's uh, Boaz's kindness. But on the backdrop of it all is God weaving his kindness into this tapestry of circumstances and events. And you might remember from the last chapter that Naomi was empty. She says, I, I, I have returned empty. And Naomi was clenched fist, angry with God. Yet here, she turns to praise. Here she turns to pray. She moves from mourning to thanksgiving. And she says, the Lord bless him. For he has not stopped showing kindness to the living and the dead. Naomi moves from mourning and anger to rejoicing and blessing. And there's something really fascinating here in the Hebrew that if I could be a bit of a nerd for a minute, I'd love to share with you. But the word that Naomi, the Hebrew word that Naomi uses for kindness is not the generic term for kindness, but she uses the word chesed in Hebrew. And chesed can mean a lot of things, but it can also mean loving kindness. And this is a very particular term that is generally associated to the Lord. 
When God describes himself to Moses in Exodus chapter 34, he says, I am the Lord, the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in hesed. Abounding in hesed, in loving kindness. And Naomi, she uses this term to describe the loving kindness that her family is experiencing because ultimately it is God's loving kindness that is being poured out through Boaz. Ultimately, this story is brimming with the loving kindness of God. God's sovereign hand over Ruth and Naomi is kind. And God's sovereign hand over you is kind. Did you know that? God's law is kind. It cares for the orphans and the widows and the poor. And God's people are kind when they obey and walk in obedience with the Lord. And God's loving kindness in this situation is restorative. And we could simply go from the start of this this chapter and work to the end and see how the kindness of God is restorative. God's loving kindness speaks lovingly to the foreigner. God's loving kindness shelters the weary. God's loving kindness gives a drink to the thirsty. God's loving kindness feeds the poor with 30 pounds of grain. God's loving kindness protects the vulnerable. God's loving kindness turns mourning into rejoicing when we encounter and experience his boundless hesed. And there's good news this morning because God's loving kindness extends from generation to generation to generation. And it did for Ruth's family. Because Ruth's great, 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 and times 11 grandson is God's love and kindness given to the world in who? Jesus. Her great, 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 great grandson is the, the kindness of God given to the world, given to you and to me. On Thursday, many of us gathered in this room and online to celebrate the life of Alex Chu, a wonderful 17-year-old boy. And what was so evident from the stories and the eulogies about Alex is that he brimmed with kindness, right? You were here, you guys were here. And one of the young ladies who gave a eulogy about Alex, she described his kindness, and she used the words of Proverbs 21.21, to describe her experience of young Alex. And it says, whoever pursues righteousness and kindness will find life, righteousness, and honor. And it was clear that, the, from the, that, that many who knew Alex were uplifted and encouraged by Alex's acts of kindness. He reflected the chesed, the loving kindness of God. And so you're probably asking me, well, what's the point of all this? <laughs> Be kind. <laughs> because God is kind. Be kind because God is kind. And that's not just some mushy Valentine stuff. <laughs> when we reflect the loving kindness of God that has been poured out into our lives, it is restorative. It breaks into this chaotic and broken and hurting and lost world. God has so lovingly poured out his kindness on us. Amen. Let us share that hesed, that loving kindness with the world. Will you pray with me? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O God. Lord Jesus, we stand humble by the lavish love, the lavish grace you have poured out on each of us in Jesus Christ, that we might be called children of God. Lord, we stand 
with great gratitude for your spirit that is poured out into our lives. An assurance that you are with us always, giving us all that we need to be the people you desire us to be. Lord, as we seek to be your people in this time, in this place, in a world that seems often so hurting and broken, may it help us to be kind. May it help us to be a blessing. May it help us to be a, a fragrance and an aroma of Jesus, of the love and kindness of God wherever we go. Lord, you know the situations and the circumstances that perhaps need our kindness today in our own lives. Would you give us your wisdom and your direction and your strength, we pray. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen.